Hello everybody and welcome back to Chaos Head. So let me go ahead and get my timer started. And let's go ahead and hop right back in. I didn't see any tremendous transformation when I passed through the school gates. Rather, no one noticed I was there. Once I entered the school building and climbed the stairs, an unfamiliar girl passed me, or passing me said, ah, and looked at me with faint sympathy in her eyes. When I reached the hallway with my classroom in it, several of the windows there were broken. I sensed whispers and frank gazes from all around me. At that point, I had a bad premonition. My wishful thinking was on the verge of being ground to pieces. Yet, all I wanted to do was re meet Remy, and so I opened the classroom door. The silence lasted for about ten seconds. Everyone was watching me, and all of them had gone rigid. Looking down, I walked through the quiet classroom until I got to my seat. Taking that as his cue, a thuggish guy in the last row, I didn't know his name, began the became the first to raise his voice. That single sentence at the classroom stopped time back in motion. そう、<笑> <laughs> this blows. The situation I feared more than any other, the delinquents honing in on me as their target. No one had forgotten the disturbance I'd caused in just a week. Right now, I was the punchline representing all of Japan. A boy who had passed out cradling a figure after making a big deal about having special paranormal powers. It wouldn't help if I asserted that I'd never claimed to have ESP. In truth, it no longer mattered what I did. The true story known as the facts had spread throughout Japan, and however many hundred thousand people had recognized it as fact. No one could take it back. Not anyone. Not me. Not TV stations. Not Shogun. I was all too embarrassed self or I was an all too embarrassed self-proclaimed esper. I was an all too repulsive otaku boy. There wasn't a single person who would look upon me favorably. I, who so hated TV programs and made a mockery of otaku, had tainted otaku culture like this. I couldn't use ESP or anything of the sort. I couldn't fly, I didn't have x-ray vision nor telekinesis. I hadn't been able to get my hands on a D-sword either. I was a piece of crap and capable of recognizing or rescuing my little sister with my own two hands. I was an otaku, plain and simple, with no skills aside from my knowledge of anime and games. There was no helping it. Trying to keep from having a mental breakdown, I looked around for deliverance for Rimi. Then my eyes met Misumi. Right away, he... He averted his eyes. Well, yeah... If he acted friendly with the likes of me, even Misumi would be shunned by the rest of the class. Yeah, that's right. It was only natural. In any case, a gross otaku like me and a pretty boy like him, we lived in two different worlds. It was strange enough that he'd gotten along until now, or that we'd gotten along until now. Feeling the thread of crying start to come on, I made my line of sight circle around. As though to cling to her, I searched for Rimi's form. But she wasn't there. Rimi wasn't there. Why? Was she taking the day off? At the time like this? Then I'd lost my only method of coming in contact with Rimi. If she never came to this classroom again, I'd probably never be reunited with her for the rest of my life. I had that feeling. It had been the same when we, she first appeared. 
One day, out of the blue, Rimi had been in this class. And now, just as suddenly, she was gone. Maybe she'd gotten caught in the earthquake and died? I frantically tried to shake away such negative thoughts. But I couldn't do it. My mind sank lower and lower, leading illusions controlled my heart. Or leaden illusions, rather. Had a girl called Sakihata Rimi ever really existed in the first place? Maybe, like Seira, she was nothing more than a personality I'd created in my head. When I thought about it that way, a whole bunch of dots began to connect. Rimi always appeared to save me, as if by magic, when I most needed her. Rimi always treated me gently, despite my being a filthy otaku. Did I think a 3D girl so convenient to me and so ideal for me truly existed? I... No longer had any reason to come to school. My sole reason had disappeared. Uh, I don't recall what we picked last time. I think we might have done red. Actually, no. I think last time we did red first. But then that was a guaranteed game over. So we ended up being forced to do green to actually progress. I think. I might be misremembering, but I think that's how that went. So as far as we're concerned, we're going to say last time we picked red... If I am recalling correctly how that went. Um, because we were basically forced to pick green. Because red was literally not a valid option. It was it led to a game over. So we're going to do green this time. I was alone after all. I'd been alone from the start. I wept. Internally I wept. I thought about my heart. Or I kept, thought my heart is to keep from shredding real... Eh. Shedding real tears... It was the only semblance of pride I had left, though it was a tiny and worthless pride. It was all I could do to sit at my desk, head hanging, gritting my teeth. Even if I wasn't listening, my classmates' voices entered my ears as they talked. I wanted to run away, but I was petrified by the thought that if I moved around foolishly, they'd take it as reason to pick a fight with me. They should die, every one of them. It's not like I've got anything left to lose, so how about I end my life as it pleases me? For example... Throwing my arms around one of the girls in the class while blurting the sort of lewd lines one might hear in an arrow gay. And if possible, jumping straight into some non-con play right there in the morning classroom with everyone's eyes upon us. <laughs> Becoming halfway defiant, I surveyed the classroom. Who'd make a good target? If I was going to do it, I might as well pick a cutie, someone who didn't seem likely to resist much. Those delinquent harpies were out of the question. They wore too much makeup for being in high school and weren't at all attractive. Oh yeah, the transfer suit might work out well. She looked docile and she gave off a lolly aura that just kind of made you want to bully her. And if I remembered right, she was the clumsy type. That part of her was pretty moe too. In a certain sense, it put her rather close to 2D characters. Hmm, she might be good. <laughs> I slowly rose from my seat. The atmosphere around me changed. Those who had been taunting me before retreated a little upon seeing me suddenly move into action. Hm. You guys are all talk in the end. But I'm different, man. I pull through when things get down to the crunch. I'm going to prove that to you now. I wordlessly headed for the transfer student's desk. She sat, shrunken in her chair, facing down. <laughs> she looked up dubiously when she noticed me. For some reason, she already looked as if she were going to cry. I abruptly grabbed her slim upper arm. <laughs> I pulled her toward me. She struggled weakly. Confused or perhaps uncertain of what to do, she looked back and forth between me and those around us. <laughs> I forcefully embraced her from behind. She was as remarkably thin as she looked, enough to make me think that she'd break straight away if I treated her violently, and she was trembling like a chihuahua. But she smelled nice. As she was about a head shorter than me, I rubbed my face against her head, I buried my nose in her soft hair and sniffed its scent. She seemed too frightened to speak, although I'd never actually seen her talk before, come to think of it. She twisted her body in an attempt to wringle out of my grasp, but the strength she put into it was nothing to write home about. Even I, who normally performed no physical activity and had zero muscular bulk, was able to easily suppress her. 
The droopies around us had frozen in place, unmoving, as if taken aback by my unconventional behavior. As her transfer student shook her head, I licked her earlobe. Her delicate body jolted. What a great reaction. I was getting more and more aroused. I was ready to go wherever my lust led me without thinking of the consequences. First, some dirty talk. I'd make the timid transfer student use some obscene words. <laughs> so erotic. <laughs> Oh my god. Really? Say cock a doodle do? <laughs> oh my god. Her face instantly went red. Tears welled in her eyes and she shook her head more frantically than before. <laughs> Considering her personality, I don't think you're going to get her to say any lewd words or phrases. Realistically, especially when she's already scared shitless. And I'm going to assume part of this is a lost in translation type thing where he's saying things that are like sexual puns in Japanese, but don't really translate when you translate it to English. Um, I don't know that for certain, but I'm just going to go ahead and make a guess that that's what's happening here. And it, it's just, it's sort of being lost on me. It's still funny because it's weird ass things that we're asking her to say, generally speaking. Like, Pussycat is about the only one that I wouldn't say is particularly weird, necessarily. But Cockadoodle Doo and Sperm Whale, eh, sperm whale are just kind of weird things <laughs> that you would uh, as as assume are dirty talk. Her gestures of unwillingness incited me to further uh, sadism. Yes, sadism. I don't know why I was struggling to think what that word is. Public assault was pretty much the only choice left here. I'd reenact my favorite H scene from the Arrogate Rape Academy Year 2, the Honey Class. I slowly slid my hands, or slid my hands from her breast to her stomach. Her body quivered. The energy with which she restrained, uh, which she resisted, was diminishing. Still mortifying, but I'm feeling it, or something like that. <sighs> she had a cute face, but what a slut. Unable to hold back the laughter rising in me, I broke into a grin and thrust my hand into her skirt. <laughs> and cut, of course. Any further is a little too far for this game. I immerse myself in such delusions while sitting in my seat, face lowered. Even now, the transfer student was writhing... Uh, I have no idea. Indecorsely? I don't know. In my head, lovely moans are spilling from her mouth. <laughs> Out of this world. If my life were going to end anyway, I'd like to finish things off by experiencing something that enjoyable. The more I thought about it, the more I felt driven by the urge to do it. Maybe the second I acted so recklessly, the world would reset itself, and my simulation of the choices that led to an unhappy outcome would come to an end. And I'd return to the previous world. Rimi would be there, just like she was supposed to. Misumi would come to chat with me in his friendly way. Everyone would totally forget how I had shamed myself. No one would mock me. I ought to try it. My mind went dazed. Maybe I had a small fever. The kind of fever you get during growth spurts, or a delusion-induced fever. Not that such a phrase existed. Meh, whatever. I ought to try it. Even I couldn't go back to the previous, or even if I couldn't go back to the previous world, they'd only think I was crazy. Not that they, or no, they probably already thought so. I had nothing left to lose, so I didn't care either way. A week ago, when I heard from the nurse that Nanami was alive, I thought, because Nanami was alive, I didn't care about anything else. I didn't give a damn about my life. I wouldn't mind if they treated me like an oddball and carted me off to the hospital. It'd be nice if it would say, <clears throat> excuse me. It'd be nice if, eh. It would be nice if it was the same hospital as ISA. Where, where was ISA hospitalized anyway? The jail-esque hospital she'd been admitted to in the past? Even that would be fine. I'd be somewhat preferable to this school without Remy. 
I lost the ability to suppress my magma-like urges. I slowly rose from my seat. <laughs> I couldn't prevent laughter from swelling in me. Everyone in class regarded me with strained expressions. Don't look. There's no value in looking at someone like me. <laughs> Suddenly, I heard huh? a girl's voice. I mean, it sounds like it's the voice of Sarah, but I don't know if that's accurate. On top of that, such an anime voice. Okay, yeah, it's going to end up being Sarah, isn't it? How the hell is she doing anyway? We've, we've not heard about ISA basically since we knew she was taken to the hospital. Who? Who the heck was talking to me? I looked around the classroom one more time. Everyone had been petrified, their mouths closed in response to my suspicious behavior. I couldn't spot anyone who seemed to be speaking. For starters, this voice, it gave me a weird sensation, like it was resonating directly inside my head. Okay. An oral hallucination? Or had I created a new delusional girl? <laughs> eh? What, what just happened? She'd answered my thoughts. Had she read my mind? No, it must be imaginary. When I shouted, my classmates scooted away from me as though fleeing. I think most people would too. In this scenario, you don't want to be next to the guy who seems like he's about to have a mental breakdown. You still haven't answered the question of who the hell you are and where you are. I mean, you say you're here, but it doesn't quite seem accurate. The voice didn't answer my questions. It continued talking using peculiar intonation. I went cold. I had goosebumps. This is what she said in a very bright and cheerful tone. Okay. Yeah. So our our character is um he's having a mental breakdown. Stop it already. Hunched over my seat, I held my head. Oh, we went back to our seat, apparently. We make zero mention of the fact that we did that. The world didn't reset itself. I didn't return to the parallel world where Rimi was. Whatever the case, it seemed like I had gone completely crazy. Probably because he did. When Ban visited again for the first time in a week, the Frisia office looked somewhat different than before. The mountain of documents piled up on each employee's desk had now completely vanished. Did it really? Because there's a pile of... Well... Of binders, at least, over here. Clearly in this shot. It must have been that they went tumbling down in the earthquake, followed by Momose giving out orders to clean everything up. Thanks to that, the office left a clean, refreshed impression on him. Did it really? Because, again, there's a whole bunch of binders just sitting on this desk back here. Regarding it from the corner of his eyes as he sighed, Ben settled down in the wheeled chair he pulled over. He fanned his face busily with his beloved fan. Momose, who had been typing away at her notebook BC, cast a glance at his gloomy countenance and, knelt her, er, and knit her eyebrows together. You could just say notebook or laptop. You don't need to say notebook PC. なあ、
Okay, that's an interesting question to ask. じゃあ、瞬間移動は箱の中に入ってとかそういうこと? <laughs> shrugged and took off one of the bean or it's not took off. Shrugged and took one of the bean paste buns that pa that Ban had brought as refreshments, popping it into her mouth. Oh, we brought Sua along, apparently. Sua brought over two paper cups, the green tea he'd poured in them was steaming. Did he not get one for himself? Yeah, Smiling breezily, he handed Momose and Ban their paper cups. Ban had taken Sue here in the past when they were working on a different case. Ever since, he had begun looking more to Momose as his mentor than to Ban, his direct superior. Momose had also taken a liking to the young and honest Sue, and she didn't disparage him the way she did Ban. <laughs> She was like, I don't quite believe you, but so be it. You're assuming Sua has a choice in who his superior is in this scenario. Because you probably don't. Ignoring Ban, who scrunched his face up as if he just couldn't accept it, Mamase held the box of bean pastes out to Suba. Watching his junior bow his head neatly and reach a hand toward the bean pastries, Ban sighed yet again. A line graph was displayed. That's not a line graph, but okay. A line graph was displayed on her laptop's monitor, raising and falling like waves, it drew gentle curves. Sue, who had circled behind Ban, tilted his head as he peered at it. Whoops, I thought he was done talking, but apparently he wasn't. そんなことできるんすか G。でも、5年っすよ。それだけ続いてれば異常じゃなくて正常な状態と言えなくもないんじゃないですか not really if the, any change in GE rate is supposed to be something that occurs like over centuries. A change over the course of five years, especially if it's a measurable change, would result in something happen. More than likely something abnormal happened that caused the conditions to change. It just depends on basically how long uh, it's supposed to take for some sort of change that's measurable in the GE rate to occur. 
and if five years is significantly lower than that supposed um, actual rate of change, then then something has happened. Okay, so apparently we're also observing a measurable difference that occurs on the weekends as opposed to during the week. I haven't taken had any. Okay, sure. <laughs> Couldn't quite make up your mind if you wanted to say I haven't had any breaks or I haven't taken any breaks. Bumbase shook her head a little in response to the disappointed looking detectives, both of whom had hung their heads. Well, that's interesting that the fluctuations, however, stop during New Year's, the Bond Festival, and so forth. Presumably, the so forth is like any other major holiday. But why halt the change on? Certain holidays. Nemotnenshia ちなみにここと、ここ、見て。said Momose, pointing first to the very center of the line graph and then to the most recent data on the far right hand side. この Oh, oh, is the other one gonna be when the magnitude 5 occurred? Ignoring the two detectives' exchange, Momose continued her ex explanation. Yes, it was. あの can electromagnetic waves cause an earthquake? I mean, even if that's theoretically possible, I would assume it would require a ludicrous amount of power to actually create enough electromagnetic waves to cause an earthquake. Whoa。そんなこと Damn, that's a significant increase in deaths 
from an earthquake going up two magnitudes. Probably because there wasn't much evidence to support it, so it's a little bit hard to really keep talking about that. Yeah, or that, I guess that's also a possibility. I just don't think it's particularly likely as a, an explanation. まさか。目はどうか。おそらくそうよ。え、マジっすか?目はどうとつながりのある企業団体を洗うべきか。もうやったわよ。雑すがももちゃん。相変わらず仕事早いね。I was gonna say, damn, she works fast, unless she was already checking all that stuff out well before. Momo say raised both hands in a huge stretch. She tilted her head a little, making the bones in her neck crack pleasantly. Oh, fun. そうかもしれないわね。これでも結構時間かけて調べたのよ。本に襲っちのけてね。でも行き詰まっちゃったわ。よほど巧妙に隠されているか。つわちゃんの言う通り、私の推測が見当外れでしかないのか。うん。Inter
Um, I might be wrong about that. I don't think I am, however. But yeah, so those are those are there's options. Like I said, those are the two best ways to support the channel if you wish to go ahead and do so. But that'll be it for this video, and I will see you all next time.